barely know you, but I feel like I know you. Has that ever happened to you? You meet someone and it's like you've known each other all your lives? I wanted to talk to you so many times, but your sister was always in the way. And I get my chance, and a few minutes later you're lying on the surface with a cracked helmet and no oxygen for eight minutes. This can't be how it ends. I don't believe the universe is that sadistic. Detective, what are you doing here? I'm investigating the circumstances of your sister's injury. Don't think she's going to tell you much about it, unfortunately. Uh, physical evidence. Chief Mac Peters took a kid on the most dangerous mission in a generation, and she paid for his thoughtless arrogance. What is there to investigate? Can't you just charge him for negligent endangerment? There are, are other issues here. S some possibility of sabotage. If the reactor explosion wasn't an accident, it it's possible Larissa's injury was also intended. Whatever. The ultimate responsibility for putting her out there is still on Peters. Don't tell anyone I mentioned possible sabotage. Hmm. Doctor, I'm begging you. You have a reputation for uh, unconventional medicine. Can't you think of something, anything to fix her brain damage? I've been thinking about that, and I've been reviewing the Centaurian medical database. I found a procedure there which might be able to repair the damage to her brain. Yes, I knew you'd find something. I'd have to break some antiquated laws. I don't think you'll approve, Detective. Do it! Anything! If you can bring her back, I swear to you, I will do everything in my power to see to it that you're not prosecuted. Well, very well. I'll need you to get a few items from the Centaurian section for me. No problem. I can get in there without the mayor suspecting anything. I'll write you a list. Thanks for your help, Detective. You're not what I expected. QuietPlease.org presents 253 Matilda. At the turn of the 22nd century, the asteroid 253 Matilda was converted into an interstellar spaceship. Now 92 years into a 780-year mission, generations have come and gone. Episode 2, New Life. What have I come myself into here? State your request. <clears throat> Hello, Centurion Computer. This is Detective Arashimadi. Dr. Stone sent me to ask for a genetic resequencer, a growth accelerant, and biogel. That request cannot be handled through the automated system. I, I have to speak to someone? Ambassador Five will be brought out of suspension to hear your request. Please return in two hours to be heard. Be prompt. Okay. So, what's our status? I've worked out the parts list we need to manufacture. It'll take a couple weeks to get the primary reactor fixed. I'll need to do another service walk to complete the fix then. I suggest you take someone more experienced this time. I'll do it alone. No need to risk another life. And we're not in any danger meanwhile? As long as the secondary reactor is online, we're fine. No power conservation needed, and the engine is still accelerating us at a millimeter per second per second. If we lose the secondary somehow, maybe uh, whatever killed the primary, then we'll be in serious trouble trying to fix it while on battery backups. And are you any closer to understanding how this happened? I think so. 
There was a novel material in the combustion chamber, which appears to have ultra-reactive properties. I believe there's only a milligram of it, but it reacted as energetically as a kilogram of what we usually mine for. Not a known explosive? No. I can't rule out intentional placement, but I think this material may be naturally occurring. Material may be changing as we get deeper into Matilda. We should have mining sector check and process the ore more carefully before using it in the reactor. Detective? You wanted to see me, Mayor? Yes, Detective. Peters, you're dismissed. Well? Detective, how much do you know about the Centaurians? The Centaurians? About the same as most people, I guess? They came to Earth in an asteroid of their own around the turn of the century. They communicate non-verbally. They have advanced technology. Their bodies are suited to suspended animation in a way ours aren't. Do you remember the story of First Contact? Yes, Mayor. How a young scientist nearly caused hostilities to break out by bypassing the chain of command to try to get to know one of the Centaurians and accidentally causing a grave offense? I don't recall that part, Mayor. I suggest you read up on it later. Meanwhile, you can tell me what you were doing in the Centaurian section. Surely you're aware that requires my authorization. Sorry, Mayor. I didn't go inside, only talked to the computer. I, I needed some information from it to help with my investigation. Surely you don't think the Centaurians had anything to do with this. Haven't they been in hibernetic suspension the whole time? But I thought their more advanced sensor tech might have detected something about the explosion that we didn't. Did it? No. I realize you've been thrust into this job before you're ready, so I accept you'll make some mistakes. Just don't go there again without asking me first. Understood? Understood. As it happens, I've done a little research to set your investigation on a more fruitful path. There's an ore processor by the name of Jesus Maradona. Are you familiar with him? No, Mayor. I've got a handful of witnesses who say he's an ardent returnist. He could have sabotaged the reactor fuel, or he could know who did. I've taken the liberty of ordering him to report to you for questioning in a half hour. That's... Thank you, Mayor. You're dismissed. Computer, place a tracker on Detective Amadi's movements. Authorization Mayor, Alpha, Echo, India, Uniform, Alpha. Tracker set. Please state your name. Jesus Maradona. Obviously you know that already. And you work in ore processing? Why are you asking me what you already know? Why did you decide to work there, Jesus? Were you excited to help advance our mission and get us to Proxima? <laughs> Sarcasm doesn't suit you, Detective. You know I want us to return to Earth, otherwise you wouldn't be harassing me. But still, why would a return us work in the sector that enables us to move ever faster away from Earth. Wherever we choose to go, we'll need ore to get there. We need the engine. We need the reactors. We need power to live. But if somebody could stop our acceleration, that'd be a powerful statement. Would it? It seems to me it would only state their dangerous foolishness and turn everyone rightfully against them. Are you planning to frame us for that reactor problem yesterday, Detective? Look, I don't know what happened yet. There are several possible scenarios that fit the evidence. No doubt the mayor made sure you'd follow up the return of sabotage possibility. I'll take that silence as confirmation. How long does it take ore to reach the reactor after it goes through your processing area? About three days. Did you see anyone behaving suspiciously four days ago? No. Has anyone changed their behavior or personality in the last few days? Hugh, you're behaving very differently from the few times we've met and how everyone's always described you. 
Haven't noticed anyone else changing. How about Marcus Flint? I believe you work with him. I'd like to say he's a deeply changed man, heartbroken by his daughter's injury, and ready to become the father he should be. But you never can tell with that guy. He, he came into work this morning like nothing had happened. Reminder. Ten I'm sorry, morning. Jesus. I have to be somewhere. You can go. Oh, and I was having so much fun. The ambassador is waiting for you. You may enter, Arash Mahdi. The, the ambassador is in there. I am. Don't be afraid, human. Please be seated. Take it you've never met one of us. No, sir. The last time one of you was even dethought, I was just a little kid. Are you fully grown now? What? Yes. Have I spoken wrong? I don't trust these verbal translations of my language. Translating a combination of body language and pheromones can't be easy. Fortunate that your language is simplistic enough that there are less errors translating that direction. Let's proceed with your request. A genetic resequencer, a growth accelerant, and biogel. Why do you want these items, human? My name is Arashamadi. Apologies. Why do you want these items, Arashamadi? Are you unable to find a mate? What? This is that not the most probable reason to request cloning materials? Cloning? Oh, I, I didn't know. Dr. Stone just gave me a list. What purpose does this Dr. Stone have for cloning technology? He said this is the only way to save Larissa. The computer has informed me that there was an explosion yesterday at one of your reactors. Does this relate? Yes. Larissa was badly hurt while on the surface, inspecting the damage. Her sacrifice will allow the mission to continue and prevent a slowdown. Then we owe her a debt of gratitude for her bravery. May I ask the nature of her injury? Severe brain damage from lack of oxygen. Oh, I see. Yes, I can imagine the utility of cloning for brain tissue replacement. Your request is granted. Thank you, Ambassador. Salish! Salish Peters! Hey there, Jesus. Lovely day, isn't it? It's always a lovely day in the Arboretum. It's almost like being on Earth. In a way. But for my money, nothing can replace walking on a world's surface. That inspection trip yesterday was an amazing experience. Real ground beneath my feet and the whole universe right above my head. Careful. Keep talking like that and the mayor will order the detective to interrogate you. That's how I spent my morning. Oh, that's horrible. The mayor was already pushing his returnist sabotage theory to me over the multicom while I was on the surface. I hope he doesn't escalate things to the point where we're forced to act against him. Got your wings on you? Let's fly up to the treetops. Is there any change in her condition? No, she's in a stable coma. But thanks to the Centaurian materials Detective Amadi brought yesterday, I'm very optimistic that I'll be able to operate soon. Probably tomorrow. Operate? It's a transplant. Pieces of healthy brain to replace badly damaged parts of Larissa's brain. Well, where do you get a healthy brain? See, a cadaver would never work, and even a living brain would be rejected by the immune system and fail to integrate properly due to individual differences. So it has to be Larissa's own brain. I'm confused. That's where the cloning comes in. Which nobody knows how to do because it's been against the law for centuries. Earth law. But the Centaurians have perfected the process. How's it coming, Doctor? I might as well show both of you. Over here. Here is where I keep the clone. That that's my sister's clone? 
That's right. From nothing into what looks like a six-month-old baby in less than a day. Centaurian growth accelerant is quite effective. So, uh, you're going to cut out this baby's brain? A baby's brain doesn't do Luris any good. We'll wait until it reaches the same age as she is. Fortunately, with increasing doses of the accelerant, I'm projecting there'll be some time tomorrow. Detective, it's... Why is there a baby in here? Doctor, I do have object permanence. I remain aware of the baby, even when it's no longer visible. There, my sister's life depends on this baby. Please don't interfere. Ah, the detective's two unauthorized visits to the Centaurians. Yes, I know you went back. And now a baby who's supposed to save Apprentice Flint. A clone you're growing to harvest from? Your intelligence surprises me sometimes, Mayor. Your lack of ethics shouldn't have taken me by surprise, Doctor. Using unauthorized Centaurian technology is illegal. Cloning human beings is illegal. And harvesting the brain of a human being is damn sure illegal. Mayor, our laws are severely out of date. They were made for a planet none of us has been to and a civilization we don't live in. We have to do what we can to survive out here in interstellar space. Don't you agree, Detective? I, I think we should be flexible under the circumstances. Flexible about murdering an innocent child? If only Detective Eckholm were still alive. He'd never have let you go down this, this path. This creature may have the brain structure of a human, but it has none of the experiences needed to make it a person. It can't communicate. It can't understand. It doesn't know anything. It can't really think. Newborn babies have nine months in the womb to evolve into people. The thing I'm growing has had a day. It's just a potential, not an actual woman like, like the one lying on the bed over there. Detective Amadi, I hereby order you to carry out your duty as our law enforcement officer by arresting Dr. Stone. You've been listening to 253 Matilda, Episode 2, New Life. Created, written, produced, and directed by Paul Neerum. Detective Arash Amadi is Paul Neerum. The mayor is Roger Arnold. Dr. Stone is John Gauntz. Marissa Flint is Virginia Hargrove. Jesus Maradona is Matt Ellis. Ambassador 5 is the eSpeak speech synthesizer. Chief Mech Salish Peters is David Loftus. The Centaurian computer is Virginia Hargrove. The human computer is Kathleen Lee. Crowd noises included Emily Eichel and Paul Neerum. The announcer is Aaron Summonsby. Sound effects and music courtesy freesound.org and freepd.com. Additional music by audionautics.com. This program is licensed for free reuse and redistribution. Hear more episodes at quietplease.org slash 253.